So we're going to look at a concavity problem in context to try and, and get a better feeling for what is going on when we're talking about concavity, when we talk about these points of inflection, right? Um, so we have some polynomial function here, which we're told models the sale at some company. So probably this is value in dollars or millions of dollars, I'm not sure. Uh, and what we want to know is we want to know the following. Um, at what time were sales decreasing most rapidly? Okay, so that's the question that we want to try to answer. Um, okay, so how do we answer this question? Well, we want to find the, the time when the rate of decrease was the maximum, right? Um, so that means we're looking for sort of when was the derivative most negative, right? Because if our sales are decreasing, that means the first derivative is negative. Um, and so most negative, well, that, that means a minimum, right? So we want to find a minimum for the first derivative. Well, a minimum for the first derivative should occur at a zero for the second derivative, right? At a, at a critical point. Um, so a zero for the second derivative, of course, is also an inflection point. So what we need to do is we need to calculate some derivatives here. So we calculate F S prime of t. We get 4t cubed minus 16t, OK? Now, if we, if we were so inclined, we could factor out a 4t, leaves me with t squared minus 4, so t minus 2 times t plus 2. All right, so we have some critical numbers. Um, we don't count this one because we're not going to look at time being negative. Um, all right, t in years measured from, I don't know, found, founding of the company or something like this, I suppose. Uh, right. Uh, so those, those critical numbers, here's sort of a rough sketch, right? So t equals 0, it's here, right? Um, so this point here must correspond to t equal to 2, right? So somewhere here, looks like, you know, sales started really well, and they definitely decline, and they decline pretty steeply. Looks like somewhere around here, right? And then things start getting, well, okay, they're still getting worse, but not as fast. Then they bottom out, and then finally sales start increasing. Okay, so that fits. Second derivative. Take the derivative here. Don't don't do it here. You have to use product rule. Uh, we have twelve t squared minus sixteen. So uh, four times three t squared minus 4. Um, and so that means that uh, s double prime of t equals 0 if t is equal to. Um, move the 4 over, divide by 3, take square roots, plus or minus 2 over the square root of 3. Okay? If, we, if we wanted to, we could do this. We could factor this as root 3t minus 2, root 3t plus 2. It's often a good idea to factor completely if you can. Okay? Um, so this is, I think, around 1.16, if I remember what it says in the textbook. Okay? So somewhere around here, right? 2 over root 3. We're not going to include the, uh, the negative solution because we're not looking at negative t, right? We're only t bigger than or equal to 0 is our domain here. All right? So if we wanted to, we could give ourselves a number line. Right? We'll, we'll start it at 0. We don't want to look at the negative point there. So somewhere around here, we've got 2, two over root 3. Okay. And we can work out that if we take a t value bigger than 2 over root 3, 
both factors here are going to be positive, right? So we know that f double prime is positive here, and it's going to be negative over here, okay? So that means concave down and then concave up. And at 2 over root 3, we have an inflection point, okay? So, so this is our inflection point. Okay, it's also the point at which sales were decreasing most rapidly, right? So, so the sales kind of, you know, they start falling off and the rate at which they're falling off gets worse and worse and worse and worse until it hits some kind of, this is, was the worst possible period, I guess, in, in, in the history of the company. The sales were, were decreasing at this very rapid rate and then things start getting a little bit better, right? They're still losing sales, but they're not losing them quite as fast. And then they hit their sort of minimum sales down here. They turn things around and they start going up again, right? So that, uh, that time at which sales were decreasing most rapidly corresponds to this inflection point, right? It's a point at which the first derivative was a minimum because it switches from negative to positive, right? From decreasing to increasing, right? So the first derivative was a minimum. Um, as far as the original function, it's an inflection point. Okay, um, another, by the way, while we're on this topic, another place where you might talk about, you know, inflection points, um, where, where you might sort of see this in sort of common language, uh, it's probably not accurate for the graph, but suppose there was somewhere over here where we were increasing, right? And, and so the rate of increase is going up, 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 right? So, it's, so sales are increasing, and the rate at which they're increasing is also increasing because the graph is concave up. And let's say we hit another inflection point, right? And then we start, you know, the graph becomes concave down, right? So sales are still going up, but they're not going up as, as rapidly as they were before, right? And we might imagine that maybe sales were, you know, you know, the company was doing something here to kind of turn things around and they're putting more and more resources in. Sales, you know, are getting better. They're increasing, increasing. And then there's this point at which, well, there's still pumping resources in, but the, the rate at which sales are increasing starts to drop off, right? Um, this can be sometimes referred to as sort of a point of diminishing returns, right? So this is another way to think of inflection points is this idea of well, a point of diminishing returns. Um, so that's, that's one way of thinking about inflection points in context. Um, you'll probably come across others as well.